Robbie D and the Lesser Knowns. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Robbie D and the Lesser Knowns. I'm your expert host, Robbie D. Woo-wee. Self-clapping, thank you. And with me, as always, is producer Will. Hello. The one word wonder, producer Will. Our guest today is something special. We're very excited to have him here. You may remember him from such TV shows as Friends, reoccurring character on 7th Heaven, your 2003 Teen Choice Award winner for Best TV Breakout Star, none other than the hilarious Instagram user George Stoltz. Woo! Well, thanks for having me, gentlemen. Ooh. Yes. Thanks for coming. <sighs> My pleasure. <sighs> Teen Breakout Star. Wow pretty solid yeah i don't think we've had an award winner on the show <laughs> well i've won awards but i'm here oh yeah all you're the always time. Here. i won a participation trophy for my soccer team in sixth grade hot dog that's why we flipped this booth around so we could see your face for a participation <laughs> award winner um all joking aside that is that's spectacular yeah I'm, I'm very lucky i had that was the best job i've ever had in my life best six years as an entertainer actor. I was so fortunate to be a part of that show. It was a blast. Nice. But you weren't always a star. No. I want to take the audience back. We can do that. You were born in Michigan, but moved to Colorado. Correct. Basically spent half my childhood in Michigan and half in Colorado. Big city, Detroit, small mountain town in Colorado, going back and forth our entire childhoods, my brother and I, and then uh, ended like, up. Would you like better? Ooh. We were so spoiled. We had the best of Great Lake life during the summer in Detroit, Port Huron, Michigan, if you guys know that area, that's that big family. Uh, it's Lake St. Clair. Uh, yeah. Which is a Great Lake on Detroit, though? Uh, what, am I a moron? Lake St. Clair is part of Lake Michigan, right? I don't or know. I'm not I, remembering I legitimately this. asking. <laughs> I don't know. I would guess Lake Michigan. It seems- <laughs> yeah. There, I think um, so. I believe so. No, you know what? It's probably Erie. Actually, Lake Erie. Yeah. What am I thinking? Eerie. Yeah. No, no, it's Erie. Yeah. Lake St. Clair is where we grew up on, which is part of yes. Lake Erie. You're correct. For those watching God, the I'm video, wrong. you will see I did not Google that. That came straight from the old dome. That's impressive, folks. Thank you. Thank I'll you confirm very much. it. <laughs> yeah. It still needs to be confirmed, but we're good. So I had the best of both lives in summers in Detroit and school years in small mountain town in Colorado. At the base of Pikes Peak, which is gorgeous. That's yeah. awesome. Is that Colorado Springs? Yep. Right outside of Colorado Springs. Yeah. All right. Manistee Springs High School grad right here. Woo. How about that? Class of. Huge class, I can class imagine. Of class of we want 93. Class of Kill me yeah. now, please. I had 120, so I, I get it. You know, it's not, not a big class. Well, it's class of like. Wait, for real? 120? 120. Oh, I graduated in Stuttgart, Germany. So like in the military school there. Oh, so we had cool. maybe 430 people in our entire high school. Yeah, Everyone knew I, each other. We had 399 in our high school. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. I had 670 something. In our oh, graduate that's... class. In your Fairly class? small. My oh, class. in your class. Yeah, yeah. see? Oh, like I was Lord. like, yeah, yeah, 2,400 <laughs> high school. 5A high school. It's pretty big. Yeah, that's You know it's big be. when they have to do letters and numbers, like Texas 5A, <laughs> 7P, 3Q, <laughs> high schools. Please Seven. report to the draft offices immediately. <laughs> Was that me? No, I'm 4Q. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, um, that's great. Um, I love Colorado. Big fan. Oh, it's a gorgeous state. If you're an outdoors person, it's unbeatable. What about uh, what about acting? Was that involved in childhood at all, or is that? No, well, no, it kind of was when we were children in elementary school. It's small town, small school, where everybody gets a part if you're in the play. So, but you got one. <laughs> but I got one. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, we grew up doing plays just for fun, and because my brother told me I had to, and then. I didn't do any of that stuff in middle school slash junior high, whatever you call it. And then in high school, it was the last thing I would ever want to do because I was a super shy uh, child and my brother was the complete opposite. We have opposite personalities. And he's like, hey, idiot, you need to audition for the spring musical because we were done with sports for the season. And I was like, are you out of your mind? There's no way I can't do that stuff. He's like. Moron, all the hot girls are in the spring musicals. The school's so small, all you have to do is audition and they're gonna find you a role. 
I was like, all right, fine. <laughs> so we did uh, a couple uh, high school musical plays. My brother was always the lead, and then I was always the guy You're in the older, background. <laughs> is he older or younger? You're, He's a year younger, but yeah, he yeah. acts like the older brother. I act mm -hmm. like the younger brother. Nothing wrong with that. No. Younger brother. I'm a younger brother. I have way more fun than my older brother. Oh, I have so much fun. Yeah. But, and everybody still thinks that I'm younger than him, which <laughs> I love. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so eventually, uh, Colorado wasn't enough. Yeah. So West Side Story didn't cut it for me playing Big Deal when I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, did, but did you actually meet chicks? Oh, yeah. 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 So I wonder yeah, how many great. acting careers have been launched by like young men trying to meet chicks in theater. Programs. What about young men trying to meet other young men? Also, also <laughs> viable. Also uh, very no, viable. No, probably yeah. just as many. Yeah. As well. The only difference is sports probably weren't a first option. And then, <laughs> and then, okay, they weren't joining because they they were done with the sports season. You, know? <laughs> you were actually a high school and college athlete. Well, I mean, I thought I was, yeah. but. Probably only got an opportunity to be an athlete because there was only five of us to choose from. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at least you weren't second. Yeah, but I, <laughs> but I did uh, play football in high school and wrestled my entire childhood from middle school through college. So I ended up going to college in Colorado, in Southern Colorado. When I was there attending, it was called University of Southern Colorado. I believe now it's a branch of Colorado State University in Pueblo. But uh, so, yeah, I went there once I was done getting my ace whooped for four years. I transferred to Whittier College in Whittier, California, where my little brother was going to school. Mm -hmm. It's a small liberal arts school, uh, Quaker College. And the uh, ex-president Nixon graduated from there. And that's how they're kind of from famous. Whittier? Yeah, from Whittier. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I guess he played football there, too, from what I was told. Yeah. Richard Milhouse. Yeah. Whoa. I was unaware. Can we fact check that? Check it. I got you. He's checking it. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I thought it was like Jerry Ford was the only one to graduate a non Ivy League. Oh, school. yeah. Maybe. I don't know. No, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm okay. saying I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm, I'm the no, idiot. I think, here. I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 we'll get on that. Um, they're saying he didn't earn his varsity letter at this one article. He did? Mm hmm. Why are you whispering that? Say it louder. Well, because I haven't figured out all the information. I'm still reading oh, it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll give him time to do that. Um, got to college, and then... He was on the team, but he never really played. He served as just a reserve tackle at Whittier College. But did he graduate from... He did graduate, but he never he never played, just like Kennedy. Kennedy, oh, okay. Kennedy was on the Harvard football team, but never actually played. Not Jerry Ford. He was a fullback. Let's see. I oh, think... Yeah. Well, I haven't gotten... Yeah, number four in Michigan. He was as like the top presidential football player. Not only did Ford play at Michigan, but he was a team MVP with the Wolverines after going pro. And he had offers to go pro following college, but instead chose to coach at Yale while attending law school. Oh, that's cool. So well, we lived they, in Michigan. I, I guess got he kind of went to Ivy League. They said yeah. he was thinking most strongly about the Green Bay Packers. That's pretty close to Michigan. That been, yeah, that would have been badass. I got to go to University of Michigan high school football camp and high school wrestling camp. That was a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. Ann Arbor. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Half my my super intelligent cousins went to University of Michigan and then the rest went to Michigan State University, which yeah, I love both places. My wife's Ohio State, so she hates both. Oh, one of the best times I've ever had was going to Michigan, Ohio State uh, football game in the freezing cold. Biggest rivalry, rivalry ever, supposedly. Yeah. It's the longest about. running outside of like Lehigh and Harvard, Yale, and like Lehigh and Army Navy. Oh, geez. I was it's Army Navy, and then Lehigh played some other school, and then I think it's Ohio State, Michigan. After that, I think you're correct. It's yeah. crazy. It's a good rivalry. Good old Lehigh. That's a great game to go watch. Um, yeah, I, I got a plenty of the uh, Ohio State jokes. Like, how do you get to Ann Arbor? How? You go go west till you smell it. Go north till you step in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just they, they never end. Um, Craig would love that joke. Yeah. Hey, you know what time it is though? What uh, time? I don't know. Michigan still sucks though. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you can do it. Those all are day good. Long. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. This show isn't about Michigan though. It's about you. Um, I like Michigan. All right, producer Will likes Michigan. Great. <laughs> Great point there, Will. Like, I'm glad you chimed in. 
Uh, awesome. So uh, why don't we talk about what, how you got your start in acting, though? Because you went to Whittier College. You didn't go for acting, did you? It wasn't for acting. It was just to attend. Guys, seriously, enough about me. You ever noticed how uh, actors, entertainers, all they want to do is talk about themselves? Anyway, I got this for you. Oh. Can you guys see this? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is... That was back when I was young, so handsome, you full listen. of life and promise. For those of you looking on the wow. video, you can see what I'm holding. But for those of you listening, uh, George has been kind enough to give me a signed headshot of his character he played on Seventh Heaven, Kevin Kinkirk. Do you know how there, many teenage girls are going crazy it back reads, in 2007 right now for this? Like it's even got the CBS Paramount logo on it, and it says to Robbie D and the lesser knowns. Well, I can't read that. Oh, love, George. Don't worry, Will. I got a nude one for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. This is the best day ever. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I am. Get out the crayons and color me tickled pink. This is phenomenal stuff. All I do is give. This is, you really? This is, Put this right this is a Robbie for the rest of the <laughs> show. We got to make sure yeah. it's in the shot. It's there. Right <clears throat> there. We'll put this up here for the rest of the show. And when I get home, I will put it right above my baby's crib. You'll light it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that he's is gonna, not he's true. going to play it on the mobile. So every, <laughs> she's just falling asleep to your rotating face. Oh, After this show is over and people, uh, you get your IMDb credit for doing the show, that's going to go up at least seven or eight cents. Oh, the value. I hope so. Cause I'm going to use that. I got to pay for rent. <laughs> No, no, that's mine. You can't have it back. <laughs> You're not taking that back. That's mine. Well, thank you very much for the gifts. We always do love when actors oh, and entertainers. You're and, welcome, boys. Uh, bring us gifts. Uh, and I'll be honest, I do want to take a peek at the nude one you're going to give Will. Just a peek. We got plenty of those, I promise. <laughs> We've seen your Instagram. He's going to open a folder. It's just <laughs> it's just, he's a wall, like an FBI agent. <laughs> Folds that. You want front, back, side, upside down. <laughs> I've got, I've got a, a couple packages here. When you order three or more, that's when mm. you really start to see the savings. <laughs> eight by ten. <laughs> 10 by 8, and that's feet, not inches. Um, well, that's good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, well, we were, uh, I w but I want to know how you got your start in act. So you're in L.A. now. Oh, yeah. So and I transferred to Whittier College where my little brother was going to school. Mm -hmm. Just happened to luck out with what credits transferred and whatever, where I could graduate within a year, a year in the summer. So do finish that year. It's summertime at Whittier College and I'm taking, I got to meet my liberal art requirements. So I'm taking a course called Arabs and Muslims. I had walked in the spring with everybody else, but I needed to meet my liberal art requirements. So I'm taking Arabs and Muslims, enjoying my summer at Whittier. We have a girlfriend that we went to high school with who lives in Hollywood. And during the day, she was a assistant for theatrical agent. And at night she worked at Dublin's, what used to be Dublin's on Sunset. There was Miyagi's on one side of Sunset. Yeah. Dublin's the big Irish where, where sports the strip, bar where the club. Strip club is now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Seventh Heaven. I don't know what to call that. Uh, Seventh Vale. Body Shop. Body, or body Shop. Body yeah. Shop. Oh, yeah. Dear, I've named too many strip body clubs shop. on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really knew yeah. your strip so it was club. right by Body Shop. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is. I don't know how long it's been gone, but it's been a while. But it was the hot one of the hot spots back then, and we were broke college kids. So our girlfriend that we grew up with was like, "Hey." guys, why don't you come uh, hang out? I'll hook you up with free drinks and free food. So we'd go out there every chance we could get. Well, she got sick of us going out there to get free drinks and free food. And one day that summer, she's like, why don't you just come out so we can do something normal and have a meal and have a real conversation? I was like, all right, sure, I'll do it. So I had a day off one day and came out and met her. We were at uh, what's now called State Social. It used to be Red, Red Rock. Rock. Yeah, I worked at State Social. Did was, you really? I was a bartender there when I first opened. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you made me drink. I'm sure you overserved me. Yeah, I got I yeah. got fired from <laughs> I got fired real quick. Does that shock you, Will? <laughs> it doesn't. It was an audition, man. They he's, had me working a day. He's shift. the kind of he's the kind of bartender though that a customer wants. But the business owner is like um, yeah, no. not so much. Yeah. <laughs> we got to make a living here. If, if, if they're looking to increase profits, not ideal. If they want more business, Robbie will bring it in. But <laughs> He's got a point there. Right? But I, I never Can worked at Red Rock. Yeah. Red Rock, was a, it turned into a dirt hole. Then they redid it and turned it into state social lines. And I Correct, yeah. yeah. But I guess back in the day, Red Rock was the cool spot. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we were just there for lunch. 
uh, Sarah Wellborn and I just chatting away and a woman came up to us and was like, sorry to interrupt, but are you in the entertainment industry? And I, I mean, the last thing I ever thought I would do after being embarrassed on West Side Story in high school was <laughs> being an actor. My personality did not fit that acting entertainer stuff at all. So anyway, I look at the woman and I'm always treat everybody the same until they give me reason not to. I'm always treat everybody nicely with respect. So I'm smiling and be like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm just visiting my friend that I grew up with. And she said, okay, well, if you ever change your mind, here's my business card. And I, she walked away. I was like, nice meeting you. And then I looked at my friend. I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> so I, she goes, oh, I have no idea. Because I, I didn't even comprehend what she did, you know, working for a theatrical agent. That didn't mm -hmm. make any sense to me. I've, I'm not a super intelligent man, but I'm... I've got a little bit of street smarts or common sense. Oh, so. That is intelligent. <laughs> yeah, that is intelligent. Form of intelligence. Yeah, form Some of intelligence. people that are very intelligent don't have that shit. You know that top. you're absolutely correct. So anyway, I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, that was weird. Is this just somebody that maybe likes younger men? I don't know. So hand it to Sarah. She goes, never heard of them. But when I go to work uh, Monday morning, I'll look to see if they're legit. I was like, I don't care what you do. I'm not calling that woman. So cut to I go back to Whittier tell my brother the story and he immediately was like, you are gonna call that woman if not for yourself, for me. So I ended up calling this woman who was a theatrical agent at a giant commercial agency. They had a tiny theatrical department mm. and they represented mostly what I call so-called pretty people and most of her clients were on like daytime soaps. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I didn't really understand any of that stuff, but uh, my brother's like, yes, you're calling her no matter what. So he had me call her and I was like, just even on the phone with her, I was just sweating and shaking and couldn't even have a conversation. <laughs> That's how bad I was. Like in college, speech class, I had to meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. I got up there to give a speech, just immediately started drenched with sweat, <laughs> shaking, couldn't talk. That's how bad I was. Cut to my brother makes me call her, go meet with her, go back to Whittier. She calls again, says she wants to take another meeting. I bring my brother with me and she wanted to re represent me because my so-called pretty boy looks back then. And I was like, well, if you're going to represent me, you have to please represent my widow brother as well. <laughs> so Does the agency and woman still exist. <clears throat> yeah. Her name's uh, Mara Santino and she's still in the business. I believe she's a manager now. Mm -hmm. And KSA was the commercial agency. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So that's how we got our start. And, you know, my brother's personality fits the entertainment stuff way better than mine. Mm -hmm. And so he was beyond excited and I was beyond nervous. I was excited, but I was also like, I don't know if I should be doing this. <laughs> I wanted to get my diploma and go into the Navy as an officer. That was my plan. Dang. Yeah. He was called what my brother's dead. doing. Yeah. yeah. Called Will's my dead. brother's in Japan. You yeah. Coast guy right now. And that's really the only, the one regret I've ever had was not going to do that because I think I would have been excellent at it. I'll never be an excellent actor. Liar. But, keep but so I know that I would have been great in the Navy. So mm -hmm. that's the only kind of real regret I have. But anyway, I lucked out and uh, we started going out commercially. And then slowly, I think they realized Jeff was obviously a better actor. <laughs> so they started sending him out theatrically <laughs> and he was booking little things. And then eventually I lucked out and got to book little things. But the, the one, uh, my first like real big commercial thing was a Liz Claiborne Bora Bora campaign. And it was a commercial and print work. And I had a blast because, well, you assume we shot it in Bora Bora, but to save money, we shot it on the big island in Hawaii. <laughs> but I had a blast. And uh, is, that was, what, is that what inspired your Instagram name? Exactly. When I got my very first email account, I was like, what do I make my email account? Something that will piss off my little brother. Yes, Bora Bora George. <laughs> and then and that also became my Instagram name, too. Yeah, because I remember I looked up your Instagram and I kept typing your name. I couldn't find it. And then Jay was like, it's Bora Bora, George. <laughs> that, Thanks, Jay I Bailey. That's supposed to I, when I got the notification for a Bora Bora, George, I was like, what the fuck? Who we is this random <laughs> island man? Douchebag yeah. Bora Bora Boy. George on our amazing show. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Bora Bora, Bora, Bora George. George. All right, it's a plug time. So what's your Instagram handle? Bora Bora George. Follow at Bora Bora George for all the latest on your most recent uh vegan trends and yeah. 
pictures of George's buttocks. I call it my ace, but <laughs> it's very inappropriate. But just realize I'm doing it to entertain and make people laugh and smile and cringe from time to time and educate from time to time. I thoroughly enjoy following Instagram. Um, it will it'll give you some sort of an emotional. It's not just an, a gray page. It's one way or the other. But I do like how you do constantly say, this is not to offend you. This is for you people to laugh. And people generally don't get into like the shouting matches in your comments. They're kind of like, no, I, yeah, for I the follow most you part. for a reason because I want to see this stuff. And I'm not getting offended by. Yeah, I mean, we follow people on Instagram that entertain us. Or maybe we're attracted to some of them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> <laughs> entertain us hopefully make us laugh hopefully make us smile and hopefully educate us educate us from time to time right yeah. i think i don't know nice and you like to educate people on the meat industry yeah so my entire life i can remember ever since i was a child and uh my dad taking us fishing i was the kind of person that as soon as you caught a fish i was so excited to catch one but i was like we are putting that back yeah. where it came from so I always thought, consider myself an animal lover, all animals, even insects, whatever, as a child growing up. And then when we, we grew up with dogs all the time and we were huge dog lovers and still to this day will always be a dog lover. But I thought, okay, I love animals. And then I, in my older age, I became educated on how all we human mammals do is eat other living creatures. And... I shouldn't judge what people do at the Yulin Festival. In, the dog one? Yeah, the yeah. one where they basically treat dogs, our pets that we love, the same way that we treat cows Chickens and every and other they, mammal. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, maybe then I'm not so much of an animal lover that I thought I was since yeah. I'm eating these poor bastards every day. And of course, we like to turn our heads from the truth of how these animals are treated before we consume them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And always remember, everything's a business. We need to make a living somehow. And industries like the dairy industry have been going on mm. since the beginning of <laughs> our time. And we've been enjoying those products. But yeah. we never, ever chose to see exactly what was going on. So when I see that stuff, it mind fucks me. And I don't want to be a part of abusing animals. And I believe in a thing called science and evolution. And we're at a point in uh, human mammal history where we can lead healthy, happy lives by not eating animal products. And if we're not eating animal products, those animals are not going through the abuse that we put them through. Mm. So that's the whole reason why. One, because I love animals and I don't, my mind can't handle seeing what's actually done to them before we consume them. Mm. And a lot of people become vegan because for health reasons, which is also a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I try not to judge everyone because I'm not 100% vegan yet. You're already the least judgmental vegan that I've, ever, I've yeah. ever met. You, I didn't know in the first five minutes of meeting you. So you're already better than like 90% of vegans. You know? <laughs> hey, I'm George. I'm a vegan. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't Fuck like you that. if you're not. Yeah, it wasn't like that. <laughs> no, I will never no. be one of those guys. Like, How much but, of it do you think has to do with the greed? Like, do you think it was actually this bad in the 60s and 70s of dairy farming? Or do you think it kind of has come with more people, more money? I agree exactly with what you just yeah. said. More people, more money, bigger business. Yeah, with not that many animals were treated the way they were back then. There's so many more of us human mammals now. It's, yeah, I agree with you. I'll come back mm -hmm. to money. Mm, yep. So how would you feel about people actually hunting their own meat? If they didn't, animals, if they were living naturally and you... Yeah, see, that's very difficult for me. In my mind, if if that's what you need to do to feed your family, your loved ones, mm -hmm. and absolutely, but you're not going to torture them the way that the, yeah, 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 these big money making industries are torturing yeah, them. the chicken farming. Right, right, right. right. I, I'm not a vegetarian, but the stuff that we do to chickens, like we absolutely need to re-examine our like large scale farming practices. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm, Totally agree it's, on that. And even I think a lot of the chicken farmers, like if you watch the documentary, they're like, yeah, this isn't good. You know? Like oh, they're, yeah. They're, they're like, we don't want to do this. It's not like we're, but they've got to pay bills and it's this whole complex situation, you know, and they're, they're unhappy. The business is, everyone's, no one's happy. Right. Think of all those the people making money. small farmers throughout the history of our time that, that that's how they've fed their loved ones their entire lives. So now, mm. let's say all of a sudden, all of us become vegan. 
they're effed out of their business. They got to find something else to do. But it's just, it's not the small farmers that are the problem. The small farmers are the ones that feel like the ones that actually do treat them normally. Right. Correct. It's yeah. the Tyson chickens and all the ones that. Yeah, all I sudden, didn't want to sell out anybody in particular, oh, but we can. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Uh, it's the it's the big it's the big companies that come in and then all of a sudden they're selling their chickens for so cheap because they're doing these methods. Right. The small farmer now has to keep up with that because their prices are higher. Exactly. Never ending circle. It is. And that's what I struggle but with every day. Is I do remember that. when I was in college, cause I grew up hunting and fishing. Um, I don't eat freshwater fish because bass tastes pretty gross. Catfish are good, but the bass tastes awful. So I'm catching at least with those for sure. But I remember my, my sophomore year roommate was a, not a vegan, but he definitely, like, I'd go hunting and he'd call me. He's like, oh, you're going to go kill Bambi? You know, like the comments like that. And I was like, yeah. yeah. And one year I came home with about 80 pounds of deer meat. And he ate with me every meal. Oh, and, nice. Uh, next hunting season came around. He's like, hey, you going hunting this year? Because <laughs> I'm coming with you. I, but I was like, you know, like, that's always been my thing. It's like that deer did not suffer at all. It was walking along, took it out, and I ate it. The yeah. whole thing. Just like the Indians did. Yeah. Uh, right. Minus the shock, minus the gun. <laughs> but things the bone air. But I, so I never had a problem with that. But I do, uh, these videos, especially the ones you share on your Instagram, um, and you watch those videos and you see the way oh, they do this stuff. It's awful. I don't even share the bad ones because I, they I take want it down. to. Yeah. They take it well, down. yeah, people report me and they get taken down and <laughs> people freak out. But I'm, it's just being honest what actually happens. And then mm. until we're aware of that, I mean, people still have no problem watching those videos and then be like, eh, I'm going to go have a steak. That it mind boggles me. Yeah. Well, uh, we here at Robbie and Lesser Knowns fully support your cause. Oh, well, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And we love you. And we don't. We like that you're not a judgmental, ve- ve- possible vegan, halfway vegan. On the way yeah. to vegan. On the way to veganism. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got a buddy who's six foot five, 250 pound militant vegan, and he despises human mammals that aren't at least attempting to become vegan if they're not already. <laughs> nice. mm. You see, he's gonna, he's gonna, you, you lure more flies with honey than vinegar. You know what I mean? Like, you calmly explain your points makes me go, you know what? Maybe I should try the veganism idea more than some guy being like, you're a fucking psychopathic murderer. I'm gonna be like, okay, well, this psychopathic murderer is gonna eat a steak in front of you. If you touch me, that's assault. Yeah, you know? that, that guy would tear your fucking head. <laughs> oh, for sure. For, oh, I'm gonna, you know, yeah, I guess he very clear. I know he's killed me. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, please don't hurt Will. Will sounds tough, but then that guy's in front. Will goes, yes. Sir, <laughs> please don't kill me, sir. I love you. I'm all talk until he's right here. I'm like, I've been vegan since the day I was born. Look at me, I got a vegan. <laughs> I ain't even breastfeed. Thank you, Jason. All right, no animal <laughs> products here. Oh, um, love it. Excellent. Well, good. Thanks for sharing that. But I want to get back to you outside of that was you, but a different section of you. Right, right of course, sure. Let's get back to. One of your very first bookings in Los Angeles. Oh boy, I'm oh, scared. Oh jeez. It was the summer or the winter. Oh, it could have possibly been the fall of 2001. You audition for a little known TV show starring none other than Matt LeBlanc, Jennifer Aniston. The girl who plays Phoebe <laughs> and a couple other people who lived in apartments in New York that they could never afford, but the TV portrayed it like they could. <clears throat> I'm talking about a little show called Friends. You, sir, played Frederick for one episode. That's correct. And I believe there was like an arc or is that what it's called? Yeah, an arc or recurring super guest star by Susan Sarandon. I can't remember how many episodes she was in, but it was awesome. Anyway, her daughter, and I think my memory will serve me correctly, Eva or Ava was her daughter. So she was on the show. Her and I were, you know how Matt LeBlanc's character, Joey, was on a soap? Mm -hmm. Dr. Drake Ramore? Yeah, so uh, Susan's daughter, Eva or Ava, excuse me if I pronounced it incorrectly, uh, her and I were in the soap for a tiny scene sipping champagne and i had a full head of gorgeous luscious hair and i had what's called bro lights 
highlights for men. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bros? Uh, the first time I started talking about lights like on your body. You know? it's, like, <laughs> it's like I've never heard of these bro lights. Ava, Ava Mari Martina played <clears throat> Ava Dina. Yeah. Her name was Ava. Yeah, Ava. Okay, yeah. Or Eva. They, she was, yeah. E V A. How would you say Ava sweet. or Eva? I think for some reason it was Ava, but I'm, I'm a moron. I don't know. Oh, well, there's no phonetic spelling here, so we'll just say yeah. Eva. So imagine me being as so-called green as you can get. And if you don't know what that means, that means you have very little experience as a working entertainer slash actor, whatever. And I told you that my personality was, I was super shy. So, I mean, just the fact that I was auditioning for that show, even though it was the tiniest part ever, it was considered a co-star, which is smaller than a guest star. Uh, but I was so excited and so happy. I was so nervous. And I got to set and I'm freaking out. I'm just mind effing myself left and right. I'm like, <laughs> okay, just, you gotta keep it together. And then sure enough, Matt LeBlanc comes walking up, looks me in the eye, introduces himself and says, welcome to the show. That doesn't happen that often, I promise you. I've been doing this now for, I don't know, around 20 years. No, no, wait, 2001, what are we, 2019? Okay, trying to do for 20 years. But <laughs> So when he did that, it made me feel so much more comfortable. And I was just like, okay, well, you can do this now and did it. Not everybody, not all these big stars, these nonstop working actors are that kind and friendly. So that meant a lot to me. I mean, uh, that we here at Robbie D. Lesser knows like to highlight that when celebrities go out of their way and are graceful. Good. And nice. Yeah, like Shout that. out Matt, my favorite Friends character, too. Yeah. Hands down. Dude, he's just a solid human being in general. Yeah. So, yeah. I believe it. I had an encounter with him at Skybar. Oh. oh. Well, let's hear let this me story. Tell, let me tell you guys this story for the first time. Yeah, please. <laughs> I, I'm all excited. Look at me. I'm all like, ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, he came into Skybar when I was bartending there. And he sat down at the bar with, with his lady friend. And uh, he's, he's like, I haven't been out in Los Angeles in two years. I remember Sky Bar was cool. And I was like, yeah, well, cool, man. What's up? What can I get you? And he ordered, a, he ordered a dirty martini. So I made him a dirty martini. I actually pride myself on my martinis, by the way. Ooh. Make very good martinis. So I made him a delicious Robbie D special dirty martini and served it. And he drank one. And he drank it fairly quickly. And then he ordered another one. And I believe he ordered four throughout the course of the night. And by the time he ordered the first one as a dirty martini, and by the time he ordered the fourth one, it was a dirty slut, stupid whore martini. <laughs> and uh, all, of course, said in a very fun, hilarious, drunken That's way. That's amazing. But it, every time he ordered it, it got first it was just a dirty martini, then it was a dirty whore martini, then a dirty slutty martini. It turned into this. this Who <laughs> wouldn't want to have a dirty slutty whore martini with yes. Matt LeBlanc? <laughs> I, I, I thought it was hilarious. And Robbie. <laughs> yeah. Made by Robbie. Made by Robbie. The dirtiest, yeah. sluttiest whore in the mall. <laughs> of them all. <laughs> Each more delicious than the next. Uh, yeah, so he, we, he, that was his count. And then, of course, I comped his whole bill except <coughs> one drink, and he tipped me real nice. And I always like to highlight when celebrities tip well because a lot of them don't tip at all. They expect they can oh. this drink. <laughs> like, I would I, be. No, I comped his drink and his lady's drink. And those martinis this guy were $17. So you do the math. Six six or seven times 17 saved him quite a bit of money. Let's just think, think that so. means if I start saving now, I can afford to drink there in three years. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, but that's not kind of how much you got to pay the door guy to let you in in your jeans. Hey guys, I promise I tip well when I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a decade or two. <laughs> that's nice. Funny stuff. Good old Matt LeBlanc. Shout out, friend of the show. Come on the show if you'd like. He's yeah, actually Matt. our guest in two weeks. Yeah, he's coming on. Uh, we got him coming. We'll, we'll tag him in the Insta posts. We got him. <laughs> Maddie boy. Uh, but, you know, you said that you were trying to keep yourself together on set. Uh, I feel like more people have a harder time keeping themselves together when they audition versus once they get on set. Did you, did you have a problem auditioning or was it kind of? Oh, no, no, no. Auditioning used to be I dreaded auditioning. Just absolutely dreaded it. And then for whatever reason, once you get on set, it's completely different but i mean sometimes you freak out on set obviously but usually i think generally speaking most actors have more issues when they're auditioning and I, as a large percentage that's what i'm saying if you're freaking out on set what's the audition room like for you? oh it <laughs> used it used to be absolute hell for me yeah and I, like i told you my speech class in college i would just 
be so nervous, shaking, sweating, stuttering. <laughs> You're like, well, that's definitely not getting hired for that job. Yeah. <laughs> but just like anything, the more you do something, the more you work at something, the better you're going to get the easier it's going to get the less stressful the less anxiety you're going to have mm -hmm. uh and of course it all everyone's personalities are different so it's it's going to affect you differently mm -hmm. but once you get to a point where like this is not something i grew up doing in my opinion most of our favorite actors and entertainers almost all the ones that work nonstop, are basically born and raised in the industry mm -hmm. or at least start from a super young age when my brother and i entered at college graduates at 22 years of age, whatever we were, everyone was telling us, you guys are way too old to be starting this business. And we were naive, uh, uneducated about the business. We didn't know any better. We're like, what? You're crazy. Mm. We're young. No, no, no. Most of us working entertainers start when we're super, a lot younger yeah. than you guys. So anyway, the more you do something, the more you take acting classes, the more you work hard at something, you guys know how this works, mm -hmm. the easier things get and the more fun they'll get. So there's a huge difference between me going in an audition room back then, sweating, shaking, having severe anxiety, than now attempting to go into the room to enjoy yourself while doing a great job, but also taking control of the room so mm -hmm. you don't look like a timid little wussy boy. <laughs> I mean... How did you book Unless it? How did, how, how did you book friends if you were... Oh, I'll be brutally honest. The yeah. only reason I booked friends is because of my so-called pretty boy looks. And yeah. it was a co-star. I said, what? One or two words. I can't even remember what it was. I think I said cheers to Eva slash Ava. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's very little to that. But yeah. sometimes having tinier parts are more difficult than having yeah. bigger parts, in my opinion. Look at that face. You went high on that face. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any questions about his good looks? They're right there. And I'll tell you what, they are spectacular. Those are the days. For those uh, at home who want to watch his episode, it is season seven, episode 15 of Friends, also called The One with Joey's New Brain. Ooh, brain, brain. brain I miss brain, you, man. Brain, 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 I miss brain, you, man. Brain. But obviously, auditioning wasn't a problem because we're going to go back to James Lipton. Obviously, auditioning for you was not a problem. Because in 2002, you, sir, and all your good looks and sweaty armpits <laughs> while auditioning, went in for a little show called Seventh Heaven. And you, sir, I think you failed in your first audition. Oh, I definitely <laughs> failed. failed. <laughs> Are you but kidding? Then, but then you did not. Do tell the tale. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, my little brother, Jeff, Audition for Seventh Heaven, and to be fair and honest, we didn't grow up watching many TV shows or movies. We were outdoor kids, uh -huh. so we didn't really know what Seventh Heaven was. Of course, we'd heard of it, and so Jeff auditioned, I think, to be a boyfriend, guest star boyfriend for Jessica Biel's character, Mary, on Seventh Heaven at the time. He booked it. I can't remember if he got like a couple episodes right away or not, or maybe just one, and it turned into a couple. And then we had the same uh, agent. So I think I auditioned for Seventh Heaven to be like a high school senior who was peer pressuring uh, uh, the character Simon to drink beer while he's in high school. <laughs> and so that was going to be easy for me, piece of cake. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I got this. There's no acting required. Of course, I was 23, 24, 25. I don't remember what I was. I had to been at least 24. So I was a little bit older than a high school senior, so they passed on that, and then they brought me back in for a different part, and that's when the creator of the show, Brenda Hampton, hi Brenda, she, uh, she during the audition, she asked me, she goes, wait a minute, are you Jeff's real life brother? And I go, yeah, i pretty sure I thought you guys knew that, and that's why I was here. So then she thought it would be, I think she thought it would be cute to have real life brothers play brothers on the show. <laughs> and that's another way I lucked out. That's just all about luck for me. <clears throat> no talent, just luck. So that must have been like, there's cute to play brothers one episode. That's yeah, it. one or two episodes, that's what I was thinking. And I was like, if, I mean, we shouldn't even be allowed to do this because it's too much fun. And, uh, and then, the creator liked uh, Beverly, Mitchell and I together. Beverly played Lucy. I ended up becoming 
Lucy's husband, Kevin Kinkirk, on the show. And they just liked us together, so they kept bringing me back. So I started off as a guest star, became recurring, and then eventually became a series regular. I guess they just couldn't find anybody else. I'm like, oh, we're stuck with this guy. So, But I was... I, I basically, you know, I said I, I was super green. I was still super green, and I learned so much from that show. It was like, and I kid you not, you know how on set they have uh, acting coaches for the children? I worked with, because there's a bunch of children on 7th yeah. Heaven all the time, I got to work with the children acting coach every day. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I kid you not, she helped me so much. Mm -hmm. Because I was still super nervous. I was so excited and wanted to do a good job. I was like, I'll, whatever it takes for me to do a better job than what I'm doing, mm -hmm. let's do it. So it so was me and all act, the kids. You learned to act on set. Yeah, I learned to act on set, basically. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Hey, George, you needed – one second. Let me just work on the scene <laughs> just for a couple minutes. I'll be right there. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any way we can do a lunch and then I'll be ready? <laughs> yeah, and then I'll be ready. George, we, we, we have the adult set teacher over here. Don't want him. <laughs> Feel better here with the kids. Yeah. Does he have stickers when I do a good job? <laughs> I'm not interested in that. I don't think so. I'm and, not done with my juice. <laughs> And by become a good actor, I mean I basically play myself by using somebody else's writing, their words, somebody else's words. I'm playing Which, myself that's, but that's with a different of, vocabulary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's kind of what acting is. I think yeah. most, most big celebs bring themselves to a project. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, in my opinion, absolutely. I agree with that. You bring Look, a, if little you don't, bit, a little bit of yourself. Yeah. If you don't know these people, you don't know if they're being themselves or playing a character. Mm. But the good ones can play characters. Like you guys. You guys are good at playing characters. We're good at playing characters. Yes. Yeah. I'm very successful, and I play a character that's just, the, his life is a depressed wreck. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a character. I think if Will had to play a character, he would just, anytime he acted, it would just be Charlie Day. Yeah. From Always Sunny, though. Specifically, okay. Charlie Kelly. Oh, Charlie Kelly. Oh, yeah. Ooh, but slightly smarter, character. like Will, literate, like a literate version of Charlie Kelly. I need you to read this line over here. Uh, these pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> these pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> these pretzels are making me thirsty. That was not Charlie Kelly. No, that's the George Costanza well, one. I know. Oh, I'm doing your favorite show. Oh. What, Seinfeld? Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my favorite show, too. That's my favorite show. The, this explains it, the friendship, because this this makes sense now. Yeah, anytime I need laughter in my life, Seinfeld. That's, if, if someone said, we're going to murder you, unless you can answer one question, I would say, ask me about Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you will not murder me. <laughs> and you will not murder me. Like, like outside of, like, the names of, like, the real names and produced, blah, blah, blah. Anything that happens, the content of the episodes, there's nothing... Maybe don't count season one, but season two through nine. You've seen them all. Yeah. I've seen them all so many times I can almost just write the script down as it's happening. So you can explain the George Costanza wallet over there on the table, I, I noticed. I can. You got more cow here than here. <laughs> yes, he puts the, uh, the, yes, yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps putting, learn guitar lessons free is the one that puts his wallet over the edge and it explodes in the, yeah. in the street and goes everywhere. <laughs> you got more cow here than here. It, I had some hard candy in there. All right. I mean, um, how fun would it have been to be on that show as a guest star? Geez. Cool. And how much money would you make? On the just, it runs on every network seven, eight times yeah. a day. Like how many times your episode come up? Yeah. Actually, because you, you know, I do the session directing. Every time someone comes in who's a Seinfeld guest star, I always talk to them about it. Like I've seen, as you should. I've seen uh, the guy who played the Jiffy Park guy. He's like, your car's in back. Can't get out for a couple of days. And that guy. Oh, man. He came yeah. in and I was talking about that. I talked to Danny Woodburn who played Mickey. Oh, he nice. And you know what? He did not want to talk about Seinfeld. I really? Didn't I, I mean, I said, hey, yeah, I saw you on Seinfeld. He's like, great. What's your name? How are you? I just completely <laughs> threw it back in my face. And then I said another question kind of following up, just kind of putting my toe in the water. And it was like. Nope, here you go again. Just totally, all right, I'm not going to push yep. that. Uh, I guess we're moving on from here. <laughs> a lot of the guest stars, though, still come in. The guy who played Lippman comes in, and then... Um, oh, there's so many good name. ones, yeah. Chet, the, one of the camera operators, he was he had like a one line off. He was the dude in the Kari Krishna robe that came in. When when George comes into the diner in like the bed sheet mm -hmm. after the ladies robbed him of all his money, he's the dude with like the backwards hat and the leather jacket. He's like, and he's like, he's like, whoa, what happened to you? And George is like, not today. <laughs> and he just walks out. There. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Uh, oh, 
Plow. Murdered. That's it. I live. <laughs> Will lives. No, you're I, dead. I told you the content of the episode. I, I didn't say the people's remember. names. Uh, but the best one was Christopher Darga. I think caught Darga, right? Oh, I don't know. He was the dr- he's, that's his real name. He he drove the limousine for Elaine when she's pretending she can't hear. Yeah, that. And so I, I go, oh yeah, like that was a really good episode. And he goes, oh yes, and Mr. Tom Hanks, he too would be upset with you. And I was like, that's the exact line. That's the exact way he said it in the episode. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> he went right into it. That's he knew great. It. He knew it right away. And I was like, sweet. Um, so I got a little. Gotta love it when that happens. <sighs> it's a great show. I'm so excited. My favorite. I can barely even sit still. But you know what that show is not? That show is not Seventh Heaven, which is what you were on. I mean, what show is? Eleven seasons. How does that happen? That's awesome. Eleven seasons. You were on a hundred. Well, you were on five of those seasons for 114 episodes. Yep. And um, I just, I don't even know what I'd do with myself if you had regular acting work like that. Oh, I, I can't comprehend. I knew I was fortunate and I loved every second of it, but he you don't realize how fortunate you are until later on. I mean, let's be honest. I was extremely lucky to get on that show just as a guest star, but yet for that to turn into a series regular and then for five plus seasons that not when you start acting at 24 years old, (laughs) should that be allowed? You got to go to all the Hollywood parties. Oh, it was so much fun. Hugh Hefner said, what's up? Oh yeah. Wait, Been there for a couple real? times, yeah. Made out with you one evening. I, I, I don't think you told the truth, but I believe great it. Kisser, yeah. <clears throat> that I believe. That I believe. I bet his tongue is probing yet gentle. <laughs> I bet it's like sandpaper. Well, now he's like a billion. Yeah, you mean <laughs> was dead. right? Was like <laughs> yes, he passed away what two years ago? Oh yeah. shit! Rest in peace, my bad. Yeah. I you looked up like he's right there. <laughs> like, oh, he <laughs> Hollywood parties are interesting, though, huh? You're 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 now an invited guest versus trying to knock on the back door. Yeah, imagine being in college catering. Yeah, like catering. Uh, we had a president of our school. His name was Doctor Ash at the time. That's a whole different story. <laughs> but anyway, so I would <laughs> cater for events at the college, around the college, whatever. So that was my job, and uh, so I could pay for food and rent and beer from time to time. <clears throat> So we moved to Hollywood to pursue the entertainment industry, lucked out, met two amazing people uh, that got us catering jobs as soon as we moved to Hollywood so we could do all these catering work at night. And then if we were fortunate and lucky enough to have auditions, go to the auditions during the day. So our boss, these were big time catering companies and our bosses got to work all the like big premieres, like the original Shrek movie, we worked the premiere. Imagine me, Trey, passing at the Shrek premiere. I can't even say, I still can't say it. Prosciutto? Would you like some prosciutto? Prosciutto. Prosciutto, see? Exactly. You like, you got prosciutto? Prosciutto? like you're shooting whiskey. Prosciutto. No wonder you like He's it. a vegan. <laughs> Look at this vegan. Can't even yeah. say meat. Can't even say the meat proper. Say. No, I really can't. I have learning disabilities. Now so, I feel like a jerk. <laughs> uh, so we got to work all these cool premiere parties just stuffing our face. Basically, my brother would be like, Okay, here's one for you, and here's five for me. He <laughs> ate the entire time, nonstop. And then at the end of the night, we'd get all the leftover free booze. It was fantastic. So uh, one of the parties I got to work was, uh, or we got to work, was the premiere of uh, The Fight Club. Do you remember Matt, that movie with uh, Brad Pitt? The Fight Club? Yeah. Of course I remember that. <clears throat> it's got to be top 15. That's probably like my second favorite movie of all time. Oh, Super really? Bad's number one, and then Fight Club's number two. Oh, wow. Right in the ear. I love it. That was real. So good. <laughs> Great. And you punched him in the ear. It was real. <laughs> you, really, you told him to hit him. Hit him. Who directed that? Fincher? Yeah, yeah. Fincher, Fincher. He told he told him to hit him for real, and he hit him in the ear. So that was always. Oh, the author Lord. of the book said that it was like the, he even though he was really proud of the book he wrote, that he the thought movie the movie was, was better. <laughs> he was like, the movie was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. <laughs> it's a really good movie. Yeah. So we were, we got lucky enough to be assigned to work the vip room for the premiere so usually we're on the floor passing hors d'oeuvres serving people whatever this time we got to be in charge of the vip room my brother and i so we're in charge of bringing i think almost the entire night we basically were bringing coronas from the bar to the tables with brad pitt i believe he was dating jennifer aniston at the time and 
most of the cast of the friends and all their friends and other big celebrities or stars back there and so we just had a blast everyone was super cool super friendly we just kept them happy with coronas and bringing them food from mm -hmm. time to time what a great gig that's an awesome <laughs> that's yeah. an awesome well you got to put Hello. that kind of meat right in the right with the well VIPs. i mean you got on. some some beefcake like that you know he don't you know, eat the, meat the but he show <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so any, I had another interesting experience at that event. I remember being in that VIP room and I look over and make eye contact with a uh, gentleman and I went, oh, well, that kind of creeped me out. Kind of got looked up and down in a interesting way that I wasn't all that used to. <laughs> I like how producer Will looks at people. Yep, exactly. How, the same eyes I got when I walked in the room from Will today. <laughs> Oh, hi, cute boy. <laughs> oh, our guest is here. <laughs> they have been described as thirsty eyes before. <laughs> so I won't mention a name, but, and I didn't even know who it was when I first made eye contact with this person. And I ran over to my brother. I go, Jeff, 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 Jeff. Uh, you might not want to go over that area because I just got eye molested. <laughs> It was a guy? It was a male celebrity? It was a male celebrity, yeah. yeah a well-known big-time actor. And uh, anyway, so a few minutes later, I'm like, all right, Jeff, cover for me. I got to go take a leak. <laughs> so I went and took a leak. And as I'm washing my hands, I'm washing them, and I grab a paper towel. And then I turn to the entrance exit, and that person is there blocking the entrance oh. exit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and gives me another, what are you doing after the premiere? <laughs> Block the door? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is he bigger than you? No. Okay. Thank, I mean, I was not physically intimidated. Yeah. I was just <laughs> emotionally, spiritually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. So I basically went, uh, because I was it always. Like, was it like a one in, one out bathroom? Or is it like a multi stall? No, it was a one in. Oh, no. There was multiple stalls yeah. in there, but there's only one door for the entrance yeah. exit. And he was basically just blocking it. <laughs> and I went, uh, well, that's very nice of you, but I got to go back to work. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> he likes a man and... in uniform. Right? <laughs> oh, that's a kick well, that, that was way before I was ever in a uniform. <laughs> I, was wearing a, I was wearing $12, $12 black pants. Yep. <laughs> black shirt at his butt. Bow tie. Oops, sorry. Nice. Did you kick him in the nards on the way out? Uh, I mean, I easily could have, but I'm too nice for that. I mean, if he would have laid a hand on me, I possibly would have done that. But I'm still too nice and probably wouldn't have done that. But that, but that was before you ever got on Friends. Before you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it's a couple of friends that didn't go, oh, what's up? <laughs> yeah, no, that would have been amazing. <laughs> hey, get me another beer, but it's nice to see you. <laughs> that's, well, that sucks, but that's good. Yeah, I mean, that, that, let's be honest. That stuff happens all the time. I don't care who you are, if you're male or female. You, and especially in Hollywood, you will go through some sort of experience where you will be uncomfortable because there are a lot of people out there that will take advantage of other people if they can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Power thing, whatever. Predator thing, whatever. It hasn't happened to me yet. <clears throat> I must not be good looking. I didn't no, even nothing close to this. No, you're that's gonna, different. He, it happened to him in two is. years, so you're gonna have to wait like just for yeah, Will, Will is making <laughs> Will is making reference to the headshot. Yeah, every time I, if you're watching the video on YouTube, I point to the headshot above me. So if they're watching the video on YouTube, they don't. You don't have to narrate it for them. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I'm describing it to the listeners. <laughs> but you're never mind. Uh, Shut up. Well. <laughs> anyway, uh, well that that's great. It's not great. You, well, no, you held your ground. Well, it's good you, you held his ground. You defended yourself, and you didn't sell out for a part, which lesser man may Which have. I never have, and I kick myself for it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'd be a star right now had I just stayed in that bathroom. Absolutely. If I would have went home with that gentleman, I would be probably working nonstop. Or would you? Or would you just, I'd be you just hose a you sex in? slave, too. But <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, you wouldn't be working anymore. You would have had several. If you were, if you were partnered with him, you like I'd be doing all right. Well, we <clears throat> we here like to support um, moral decisions, and we're proud of you. 
Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, Not I still have time to guy. sell my soul. Well, sell it, sell in a slightly like less evil way. <laughs> but now that you've been on the show, we're okay with you doing that to get your name back up. <laughs> to get, to get back working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we applaud yeah. the. Yeah, you, guys, you guys are making me sound like I've worked nonstop since then. Can we get back to the reality of being an actor okay. entertainer, please? And how freaking brutal it is. Hit them with it. Hit the hit, hit the audience. All right. With well, the truth we've heard all the good stuff. Why don't you give me like a bad audition? I'm sure you got. Uh, oh yeah, I did want to quick tell you the Liz Claiborne campaign audition. Oh. And I was a young, halfway fit, decent looking male at the time. So I had a little bit of confidence, but I go into this room to audition for this Liz Claiborne campaign. They're like, okay, George, can you just uh, strip down into your underoos and then we're gonna direct you from there. Okay, so I strip down, I'm like, all right. And I good wear- thing, Good thing I wore underwear today. <laughs> exactly. And I wore tidy whiteies for that audition, but I don't think they were white tidy greenies. <laughs> Hanes for the loom. I don't remember what they were, but I was very comfortable in them. And uh, so like, okay, George, pretend you're in the jungle, Bora Bora jungle, and you're running after this gorgeous woman in a tiny bikini. And I'm like, all right, is this really happening? George, you've got, you just run out of here. There's still time. You can just run out of here, grab your clothes and run out of here before you make an idiot out of yourself. I was like, nope, you're here. You got to commit and just do it. So I did a little couple moves, a little dance moves, pretending I was chasing mm. this gorgeous woman through the jungle of Bora Bora. Can you give us some of that right now? Or? And I went with my hair and I'm chasing it. And I'm running. Wait for me. That was good. Why I did you felt make like me do the, that? the buxom lady in the bikini. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cut to that. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a close up shot only. <laughs> and cut. Good. Wonderful. All right, we've got the blackmail. We can we can end this show. <laughs> So normally you go in on these auditions and you almost always make an ass of yourself one way or another, especially if it's a commercial audition and you have to do goofy stuff like that. It's a little different than having sides and you get to work on your character and spend a lot of time to go in there other than just walking into a commercial audition like, okay, so we're dropping all this on you. We need you to do this in the next 30 seconds. Good luck, kid. Yeah. You know how that works. Oh, I do. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, he's never hired me in the hundred times that I've auditioned for him. Yeah, but you've got your partner in crime you, right there. Will. But you've come in. Yeah, and thank you for bringing me. <laughs> in. It's out of my hands once I send. Uh, see, you got you got to stick with me. First project you do with me, I hired you right away. I was like, bring in that George fella. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. Will 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 Will's gonna be the one trapping you in the bathroom. You, you wait. Yeah. So you brought up the story. What, what was your uh, your the, your guest name that you had on the show that booked something right away that was amazing? Corey Landis. Yes. Came in and booked the first or second thing you auditioned for that 70s show, then book another thing for seven years. Yeah. So that's the reality of what happens. Mm -hmm. Like he yeah. lucked out doing that. I lucked out getting on Seventh Heaven. That stuff happens. We had a great time, great experience. But once you luck out in something like that, it's it's natural for you to think, oh, I'm going to continue working nonstop in the entertainment industry. This will be a piece of cake. No, that's just not how it works. Well, you, you what about Bora Bora? Did you book that one? The Liz Claiborne campaign? Yeah, yeah I booked that. But that was just, again, based on my so-called pretty boy looks and, of course, my amazing audition, mm -hmm. pretending I was running through the jungle after a hot babe. Mm -hmm. So, no, that was great. I had a great experience in doing that. Got to go shoot in Hawaii. Uh it was an amazing experience. So I mean, I, Pretty Boy Looks is a talent, though. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Taylor Lautner is quite Captain Emotional over there. Well, he's, yeah. He's, he's pretty, and then they turn him into a werewolf. Yeah, wow. I wish I would have been turned into that werewolf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but I just mean, you know, Pretty Boy is a skill. Yeah, thank you, Mom and Dad. I, for don't, that. I don't think I can pull that one off if I tried really hard. Well, I think you're a better character actor than you claim you are. Mm, you mean my <clears throat> character actor? Correct. James Lipton. Um, what, uh, also, you did, well, uh, another side of acting I don't think people realize is talent is definitely one thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty Boy Looks is another. But also patience. Patience on set. Being a patient actor. You had to run in with an audition with that experience. Can you 
Can you elaborate on that? Great. Now, I can, now I'm forgetting, but I like that you brought up patience because you need patience. You need patience. Yeah, the whatever. one with the unnamed celebrity who, I don't want to ruin the story. <clears throat> Maybe I'll mouth it to you. We're playing phone over here. So I told right. Will, Will told George. So yeah, I was telling these guys earlier, a couple months ago I had an audition, uh, walk in to the office, beautiful office, casting directors are awesome. New York ladies have been doing this forever. Uh, I was excited to be reading for them. It was a Western, so something that I would, would be right up my alley that I would enjoy doing. I've only got to do one. It was awesome. Anyway, this one would have been great. And John Voigt was the lead actor, and that was on the information that they had emailed me. So I knew, I only knew that he was the only actor that was already attached to it. And anybody who's ever heard stories about working with John Voigt as I believe has heard the same thing. He's a pleasure to work with. He's very giving and he's respectful to everybody. And which as an actor entertainer, that's all, I mean, that's the best compliment you can get in my opinion, other than being an amazing actor. The combination of all that, which he has, that's awesome. So I was excited to get to audition for anything that an actor like John Voigt is part of. So to the audition, two scenes first time, I think they gave me some notes and I redid the second scene or whatever. And then the woman's like, well, just so you know, your father is this actor. And to let you know, he's this is a guy who's very respected in the industry. He's been working nonstop forever. And uh, but they had to explain because not everyone's like John Voigt. There's a lot that let their egos and whatnot get to him. And they're kind of pricks. So the actor that was already cast as my father, they're trying to explain to me, we have to be careful of who we choose to play this role because it cannot be anybody who's sensitive that can't handle a complete prick on set, like somebody who might not be there when it's your close-up. You will have to be there when it's his close-up, but he might not be there when it's your close-up. So stuff like that happens all the time. Not everybody's an awesome human as well as actor like Matt LeBlanc and John Voigt. Uh -huh. Not everybody is. That's just a fact. So... That was, I mean, as soon as she told me that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I don't know if you want to be telling these <laughs> actors that. But, of course, most of us actors will do whatever, put up with anything uh -huh. to be a working actor. That's also a fact. I don't care what anybody tells you otherwise. Uh -huh. So we got skill. We have good looks. And the ability to not get offended because the star across from you is a major douche. Oh, you and can. You have to be able to deliver your lines to a grip's hand and hold it there because they walk off set. Sexually harass me. You can treat me like a bag of D's, and I will still be there to perform to the best of my ability. That's fantastic news because you're going to need both of those traits because it's the part of the show we've getting we're getting to now. Oh boy, I'm where your boyish good <clears throat> looks, your patience, and your skill will not help you. Oh, there's no chance. No chance. This is. I'm going to be interrupting you. Because I'm introducing you to method acting. Don't drink that water. For those of you playing along at home, method acting is when I will give the scenario and George will give his answer as the character in that scenario. No muscle flexing. It's very serious. See that seatbelt there in your chair? Buckle it in. It's time for the first question, if you can handle it. Question one. James Cameron wants you to play a tray passing waiter who's passing prosciutto. I added that. In the Bora Bora jungle, chasing a sexy lady. For those of you listening, he ran then he dropped the tray, apparently, when the lady turned around and must have looked at him like he was nuts. <laughs> did, I, did I interpret correctly? You did 100% correct. <laughs> All right, not bad. Question two, two. Why would you make me do this? Matt LeBlanc gets you a Bloody Mary with a bacon strip stir, and he tells you, drink of this drink, and you will become a series regular on my next show. Am I allowed to talk? 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi, Matthew. Thank you for the cocktail. You sipping it? 
Mmm, that's delicious, Matthew. Now, what do I gotta do to become a series regular on one of your shows, handsome? He says, eat the bacon. Very good. Okay. Staying true to his morals. I like that. Not selling out yet. I respect it. I got news for you. No, I would if he <laughs> asked me to. Don't say that now. You had the audience going. You had them fooled. All right. Go ahead and wipe that sweat off your brow. Because it's time for question three. Three. E. 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 Question three. Brenda Hampton wants you and Jeff to play conjoined twins in the Seventh Heaven spinoff. Eighth Heaven. Two brothers working as caterers. Jeff, no, I do not want to become an actor. You have the personality for it. I do not. I'll just stay tray passing prosciutto for everybody. <laughs> and that's it for method acting. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god, it doesn't get worse than that. I'm not gonna lie, you did better than I thought. <laughs> we had low bars, but oh you my god. Low bars. As soon as you said method, I was thinking, oh, these guys are gonna make me do an accent. They're gonna try and I'm oh. like, oh fuck. It's up to you, the performer. Well, either way, very funny stuff. We appreciate you playing along on our little game. But I'm gonna ask you, Jorge, the same question we ask all of our guests at the end of our show, and that's what would George Stoltz now. Tell George Stoltz with his young good looks driving from Colorado to Los Angeles. You moron. What are you thinking starting in the entertainment industry at 24 years old? No, I'm kidding. I would say, young Georgie boy, you decided to pursue this industry. You better go at it as hard as you can and never give up and never change who you really are. Even though you are trying to be an actor and you're supposed to act, but never lose touch with where you came from who you are i like it and always work hard of course yes <clears throat> fantastic stuff great advice great show great show a lot of good information today once again thank you very very much for my picture i'm going to put this on my nightstand right next to my baby photos um because she can't write she can't even sign her own pictures yet well, but congrats on your you baby can. girl by thank the way. you very much kevin kinkirk i appreciate that um Thanks for doing the show. Really appreciate it. We had a great time. Producer Will says thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, guys. <laughs> I had a blast. It was a great experience. I promise the next time you come in and audition, you can have as many takes as you want. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you just do You can do 100 if you want, as long as it doesn't screw my day up too much. But uh, we really appreciate it. And don't forget, everyone at home, you can find us on Instagram rdlk underscore podcast and now like you guys know we have youtube robbie d and the lesser knowns like and subscribe facebook watch videos facebook who's heard of that Ooh, mark zuckerberg. never heard of it <laughs> and mark zuckerberg yeah yeah get at us All right. <laughs> sponsor us get on there yeah mark and this is our plug portion george one more time let them know where they can find your hilarious instagram uh bora bora george b-o-r-a b-o-r-a george Good nice. luck with that inappropriateness. Just be ready. If you want to follow him, you cannot get offended. That's the number one rule. And as you guys know, we'll be back next week with another guest. And next week's guest is going to be none other than Matt LeBlanc. He's going to yes! come on. All right. That may or may not be true. Only one way to find out, and that's to tune in to next week's show. And until then, this is Robbie D, and these are the lesser knowns. Robbie D and the lesson known.